Welcome to your Bobby List Today Evening News Update for Friday, October 25th. Thanks for joining us. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. Chief Executive Officer William Billy Griffith is parting ways with the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. Griffith tendered in his resignation today and it will take effect on December 31. A BTMI press release stated that Griffith was stepping down in order to give the organization an opportunity to recruit a new leader and ensure a smooth transition as his contract comes to an end. Griffith said he was extremely grateful for the opportunity to give back to his country by contributing to its most valuable sector and was extremely pr proud of what the organization was able to achieve during the past five years. Chairman of the BTMI board, Sunil Chaturani, thanked Griffith for his significant contribution to the organization since its inception in 2014 and wished him the best in his future endeavors. He said the search for a new CEO will commence immediately as the organization transitions into a public-private sector partnership. Government proposes the establishment of a cooperative credit union to give residents an opportunity to invest in the expansion of the island's renewable energy sector. The revelation today from officials in the Ministry of Energy and Water Resources at a special meeting of the Barbados Cooperative Society held at the Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Centre. Minister of Energy Wilfred Abram said the biggest single drain on the country's foreign exchange was the importation of fossil fuel and the island simply could not afford it anymore. There's a lot of money in the credit union and the cooperative sector in Barbados. A lot of your charters are very limited in what you are allowed to invest in and the investments that you're allowed to do. You have a choice now. You can stick with what I call the outdated mode of doing things, or you can actually start now to embrace the change that has to happen in Barbados like the government has embraced it. We're not playing. I don't think anybody is in doubt that the government is 100% committed to being fossil fuel free by 2030. A number of the people who got on board very early benefited from some <laughs> very good rates for feeding tariffs from the um, FTC. I mean, those people who have licenses or got licenses in the last two years will be, I think the licenses are locked in for about 20 years at what is a great return on their investment. Education Minister Santia Bradshaw says her ministry remains committed to providing ongoing training for teachers or special needs students. She gave the assurance in an address at the unveiling of a mural at the Ann Hill School this morning. The minister says apart from training, professional development opportunities will also be created so teachers and leaders of such institutions remain on the cutting edge of educational development in order to cater to their students' psychosocial and cognitive needs. Our commitment as a ministry to training has seen our teachers at a range of schools, including special schools, exposed to further professional development designed to strengthen their professional competencies in key areas. This morning, we therefore recognize the Ann Hill School as one of our signature schools, which has effectively carved out for itself a special niche in catering to many of our different behavioral students. Students who, as we have heard before, nonetheless are blessed with a range of talents and gifts to be developed under the caring and watchful eyes of both teachers and parents. At the Ministry of Education, Technological and Vocational Training, we remain committed to our students with special needs and to our teachers who work hard to assist them on their individual developmental journeys. Barbados now has a digital archive featuring its centenarians. The Centenarians of Barbados website was launched this morning by the Barbados Government Information Service along with the Barbados Museum and Historical Society and the Ministry of People Empowerment and Elder Affairs. Addressing the gathering, which included almost a dozen centenarians, Minister of Elder Affairs Cynthia Ford said the country must ensure that persons who reached this milestone receive recognition. She said the website was a good way to chronicle the country's rich history. This is a novel project, a wonderful concept, and that we should continue to chronicle our history 
our cultural norms, our value system, whatever it is that has done, been done to have brought us thus far, we have so many achievements. And I want to encourage all of you parents and guardians, see how best you can get the generational linkages with our youth who do not know and sometimes do not understand because we the adults do not ensure that they sit at the feet of granny and granddad or the neighbor or the godmother or godfather to be able to drink in that rich history. Perhaps they will get something on Google soon about Barbados and our longevity, but we need to do it because the oral history of Barbados is more integral to anything else than what we will pick up from other places because sometimes people distort history. But this font of knowledge here in this room alone with almost a dozen centenarians is enough for us to gather history that can last us for 500 years. Somebody has to write it down, this website, and all those historians who have started already will make the difference because when we are hushed and gone, our history cannot be erased from our minds. There's regional and international news after this short break. It's Festive Friday at the Bridgetown Night Market at Pelican Craft Center. Kick off the weekend this Friday from 4 p.m. to midnight with loads of food, drinks, and entertainment. Get ready for crop over with the Rhythm Root Street Parade. Party like it's Kadooman Day on the street around Pelican Village with costume revelers, music, and more. It's Festive Friday. It's Festive Friday at the Bridgetown Night Market at Pelican Village Center from 4 p.m. to midnight. Admission free. Regional News Now, the Minister of Immigration in the Bahamas, makes it clear that the country's laws have not changed following the passage of Hurricane Dorian despite special consideration for survivors. Minister Johnson made the comments following continued criticisms over the resumption of deportation of Haitian migrants. We get more in this report from ZNS News. He says following the storm, the government made it clear that everyone that needed social services help would get it despite who they are. In the wake of criticism over government having resumed deportations of more than 100 Haitian nationals, Mr. Johnson stressed that the enforcement of the Bahamas immigration laws is not exclusive to any one group. We all understand that we are under serious pressure from the OECD, the Financial Action Task Force, and we have an obligation to know who is in this country. The reason why I say that we sell our product as a safe country to come to with a stable government and a stable judiciary is because those are some of the requirements uh, that are required when dealing with immigration. And so, as I said, the laws haven't changed before and they're still the same. Now, Johnson stressed that there is a proper way to come to the Bahamas and there is a way, whether or not you live here. He says the same rule applies despite skin color or nationality. We know that we have an immigration problem. We know that we have a, hum a, a, a Bahamian problem that's involved in the situation in terms of what we have with immigration. We try our best to apply the laws in a humane way. Uh, that are, there are persons who are justifiably, uh, justifiably in a position where they should be given status. We're trying our best to give them those status. But we're saying to persons, if, if, if you want to work and live in the Bahamas, you must make an application to the Immigration Department. And finally, on the international front, United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres reacts to the wave of demonstrations sweeping across the globe. He said the demonstrations are being triggered by a variety of reasons, adding that it was clear that there was a growing deficit in trust between people and political establishments. We are witnessing a wave of demonstrations around the world. 
from the Middle East to Latin America and the Caribbean, from Europe to Africa and Asia. This quiet in people's lives is leading to anything but quiet in streets and city squares. Every situation is unique. Some protests are triggered by economic issues, including rising prices, persistent inequality, or financial systems that benefit elites. Others stem from political demands. And in some cases, people are reacting to corruption or different forms of discrimination. Yet, there are commonalities that span the continents and that should force all of us to reflect and respond. And that's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates or like us on Facebook and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. Good evening.